I was born in uh, April 1956, uh, which I later found out to be the same week that uh, Elvis Presley released his first song, Hound Dog. So the way I figure it, I'm pretty much the birth of rock and roll, and I can wear it well. <laughs> Music just caught my ear, my eye, my heart, my soul, everything, uh, right from the get-go. I loved Australian music, and I wanted to be a rock god like everyone else. Formed a band with uh, four other Catholic schoolboys. We were a band called Satan's Image, and we played Creedence covers. After one gig and a loss of 150 bucks, I uh, decided that performing was not for me, but I found that I had a penchant and a flair for uh, organising, which is what I wanted to do. When uh, my hero Billy Thorpe was coming back after living in America for so long and was going to tour, I just rang the agency that was uh, booking him and asked for a job. Uh, next thing I knew, I left the corporate security of Westfield and I just jumped straight into the deep end, uh, into the uncharted waters of the Australian music industry. Before I knew it, I happened to be the tour manager of two of those biggest bands around that time, first being the Angels and the second was Cold Chisel. Inspiration, it can come from anywhere, uh, all you got to do is keep your eyes open. We just received Jimmy's song, Working Class Man. We knew we had a smash on our hands, but we knew we had to uh, come up with some visuals that were iconic as the song itself. Happened to be watching the Channel 6 Mackay News and uh, they were talking about the sugarcane farmers doing it really tough uh, at the time. And there it was, right on the, right on the screen, the burning sugarcane. Uh, so for the next three days with my little stick figures that I drew, uh, came up with the whole concept and uh, and there it was, uh, a visual uh, iconic image to match an iconic song. This wonderful music industry that I fell in love with um, also had a habit of eating their own. When I finished managing Jimmy, uh, I was the manager of the biggest solo act or the biggest act in the country at that stage. The following day I was nobody, but I was free. Went to Kashmir, went through the Himalayas trekking, I read a lot of books. And a phrase or a chapter heading stood in my mind, it still stays in my mind to this day, and that was to begin with an end in mind. When you're creating something from a blank page in terms of a tour uh, or an event, you have to really, really work out in your own mind as exactly uh, what your outcome is that you're looking for, and then work back as to how you're going to achieve that. Uh, the 80s was definitely my decade. Uh, certainly took some years off me. After 12 years of being independent, went on to head up the A&R department of Warner Music for the next eight years, and uh, responsible for signing bands like Regurgitated, The Super Jesus, The Whitlam's, amongst others, and building a roster up from scratch. Nobody really wanted to sign with Warner's back then because they were off the boil. So one of the things I came up with was, if you can't win the game, change the rules. Before I knew it, I had too many planes and not enough landing strips. I had so many acts I didn't know what to do with. Having worked in the industry for 36 years now, uh, one of the things I recognised is that seven years was the cycle that I found uh, that worked for a chapter. Anything past the seven years started to, I don't know, it was just time for change. But it was funny with uh, Warner Music, um, back then the computers, you had to turn your computer off every night and um, <laughs> every night it said, are you sure you want to quit? And every night I said, yes, I do. Uh, it took me a year to get out of Warners. Um, Sean James was the boss at the time and he kept me there as long as I, I can handle it sort of thing. But there's something about a grey-haired guy going out and looking for the next big thing that didn't really appeal to me anymore. So it was time to end it. So I've been in this business for 36 years. For the first 13 years, my mum would always say to me, when are you going to get a real job? Well, I did, mum. Uh, it was called the music industry. 